and welcome to this basics episode on the Thunderbolt, the number one locomotive of the Titfield and Mallingford Railway. The Thunderbolt shot to fame in a documentary made in 1953 about the endeavours of a small community to save their local branch line from closure. Having lost money for years, but yet providing a vital community service, the townsfolk, led by the Reverend Sam Weech and Squire Gordon Chesterton, appealed to a wealthy local benefactor, Mr Walter Valentine, to fund what today might be termed a community rail partnership to operate the line under the auspices of a light railway order. Any history of Thunderbolt must also be a history of the Titfield and Mallingford Railway. Unfortunately, the origins of the line are obscure, no records from the company remain, and no trace can be found today for an Act of Parliament, suggesting that the railway was originally built over private land. Lack of any early inspection returns by the Board of Trade, however, suggests that passenger carrying may at first have been illegal. When the line was built is also unclear. In a 1953 interview, Squire Gordon Chesterton said that the railway had been built by his grandfather. The Squire was 34 in 1953 and was born in 1919, suggesting that his father had been born sometime in the 1890s. Therefore, his grandfather was born about 1870 or a little bit earlier. Therefore, unless a squire was mistaken over which ancestor had built the railway, then it is highly likely that the Titfield and Mallingford Railway was built in the late 1880s or early 1890s. This of course raises further questions. The number one locomotive, the Thunderbolt, which was removed from Mallingford Museum and steamed in an act of desperation, is of a type built in Leeds in Yorkshire in the late 1830s or the early 1840s. In other words, if Squire Chesterton is correct in suggesting his grandfather had built the railway, then Thunderbolt was already a relic when the railway first opened. Therefore, it is likely Thunderbolt was one of those ancient locomotives which had survived by being hired to civil engineering contractors by the likes of Isaac Watt Bolton of ashton on the Line. Although there is no record of Bolton having ever owned Thunderbolt, his records are at best patchy. So it is likely that Bolton, who owned an incredible collection of venerable locomotives, including some from the Liverpool and Manchester Railway, which he hired to contractors, leased the Thunderbolt for the building of the Titfield and Mallingford Railway. Upon completion of that contract, with a new railway urgently needing some motive power of its own, Thunderbolt was given a new coat of red and green paint and sold to the squire to work his new railway. Thunderbolt has several idiosyncrasies, thanks to the type of valve gear used, in order for the locomotive to go forward, the reversing lever has to be pulled backwards. There are no brakes on the engine and only a weak and, as demonstrated in the 1953 documentary, an unreliable handbrake on the tender. Furthermore, the type of coupling was incompatible with modern rolling stock. Engine sheds and workshops provided at the Mallingford end of the line where there was a mainline connection. The provision at Titfield was very minimal and there wasn't even a water tower. How long Thunderbolt remained in use is unclear. As with other branch lines of its type, the Titfield and Mallingford Railway must have been grouped into the Great Western Railway in 1923 and was then nationalised as part of British Railways in 1948. It was perhaps the Great Western who began working the line with 14XX auto tanks in the early 1930s. It was also perhaps Bolton who supplied some of the early rolling stock including one venerable three-compartment first-class coach, which later became the home of Dan Taylor, a retired LNER platelier and part-time driver on the Titfield line. The former Wisbech and Upwell bogey tramcar arrived second-hand around 1930, following cessation of passenger traffic on that line in 1927. Its arrival perhaps coincided with the 14XX tanks as part of a concerted effort by the GWR to modernise and revitalise a line which was already failing and losing money in the face of road competition. 
Thunderbolt became an overnight sensation when the venerable machine, thanks to the actions of the town clerk George Blakeworth, was wheeled out of Mallingford Museum and restored to steam in 24 hours, and with no less than his grace, the Bishop of Welchester as fireman, she worked the train inspected by the Ministry of Transport, which granted the revivalists the vital light railway order. Thereafter, Thunderbolt was once again placed in a position of honour in Mallingford Museum, having both worked the opening train of the Titfield and Mallingford Railway, and the train which saved the Titfield and Mallingford in 1953. I hope you have enjoyed this video, and if you have, please leave a comment below. And if you haven't already, please like, share and subscribe, and click the notification bell. And see you all next time on Rail Story.